So back in March of 2006, I was six years old. I have very faint memories from that time of our living room in our house having something new, fun, and unique in baseball called the World Baseball Classic on the TV. An international tournament where the best of the best baseball players represent their countries and heritage. Just off that information alone, I was hooked. I've loved the WBC ever since. It was just so rare for baseball at that stage. Until this year, basically no video game on the market offered licensed international baseball tie-ins. Except MLB 2K6. Remember when MLB had 2K games? In 2017, I got to experience a World Baseball Classic game in person. It's a high I'm still chasing to experience again. Same with the tournament itself. They put games from every round in Miami for 2023 because of that same vibe I was fortunate enough to experience. And just a few months ago in December of 2022, the thrilling final of the FIFA World Cup left a great taste in everyone's mouths for international sports. Which brings us to the 2023 World Baseball Classic, the most hyped installment in the tournament's history thus far. Great players, great atmosphere, and a whole lot of passion from everyone involved. My name is Mike. I went to games down in Miami. Fellow Stark Raving Sports team member Sportstorm took a trip to see some games in Phoenix. With the tournament not quite over yet, we have one very simple message for you. Watch the World Baseball Classic. If our word isn't good enough, we've captured our recent experiences for you to show you what we mean. Bear with us though. First, we gotta talk about the WBC at large. And if you enjoy what you see here today, make sure to subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Gotta do the YouTuber thing, you know? To this point, there had not been a World Baseball Classic in six years because of the COVID pandemic. So to say everyone had been antsy for a new international baseball competition was underselling it. To those who only watch baseball through MLB games, the very same players put forth significantly more emotion and visible fun than you're used to. It's a lot like college baseball in that regard. Another underrated sector of baseball I've already given its flowers at length. But this time, there's two big distinctions. One, a lot of these players are extremely well paid, and two, they're representing their countries, not a school. So you know the talent and the cause they're representing are so much more motivating. But while not all the players come from the major leagues, they're still out here for the love of the game. The best example of this, by far, is the Czech Republic's team from this WBC. Their roster consists of a pitcher who is also a firefighter, an outfielder who is also a geography teacher, and on top of those guys, their manager is a neurologist. His full-time job is not leading a baseball team, it is treating brain disorders. There's also Michael Cavalla, 2023's top European high school baseball prospect. He's supposed to be a really good pitcher. Perfect Game gave him the same prospect grade as seven-time All-Star Chris Sale, and a higher prospect grade than they gave Max Muncy, who's hit 35 home runs in three different MLB seasons, so Cavalla is supposed to be pretty good. Then just on the same team is Eric Sogard, an 11-year MLB veteran born in the United States, who we almost named the face of baseball in a weird fan voting contest back in 2014. In this tournament, though, those guys share a locker room. It's like when we were just suddenly baseball peers with Eric Sim, the king of Juco who played one level short of the big leagues. And there's me. Baseball is just different, man. These guys earn the respect of the baseball world, though. A Czech pitcher who is also an electrician as like his real job struck Shohei Otani out, and Otani made sure to shout the Czechs out on his Instagram story. In the same game, 21-year-old Japanese stud pitcher Roki Sasaki hit a Czech player with a pitch, so he tracked him down, apologized, and gave him two big old bags of candy. Come on, this is just incredible. This illustrates how every player followed their own unique path to be in this position. Unfortunately, some of these players have or will experience significant obstacles along the way. On March 15th, two tournament favorites, Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic, faced off in a game where only the winner moves on to the next round. The combination of a high stakes game and two incredibly passionate fan bases produced one of the loudest atmospheres ever heard in a baseball stadium. 
The Puerto Rican fanbase was sent into a frenzy after the final out. Unfortunately, the euphoria came to a screeching halt when superstar closer Edwin Diaz fell to the ground grasping his knee. The following day, it was announced that he had torn the patellar tendon in his right knee, ending his season altogether. Before we move on, we want to wish Diaz a speedy recovery. It's a shame this discourse is happening at the expense of Diaz. He's incredibly talented and great for baseball, so we hope he comes back better than ever. With that being said, from the moment this injury occurred, many people voiced their opinions, with some saying the WBC should be cancelled as it's quote unquote a meaningless tournament. I get it, Diaz just signed a $100 million contract and he suffered a season-long injury playing for a team that isn't the New York Mets. Also, the WBC started less than 20 years ago, so it doesn't have the prestige of a tournament like the World Cup. Although, while I understand this perspective, to call this a meaningless tournament is ridiculous. Just look at the numbers. Over 1 million fans attended a game in the first round, doubling the record set in 2017. As for TV ratings, all the tournaments tournament favorites had significant increases compared to 2017, with Japan providing shocking numbers. The matchup between Japan and South Korea registered a 44.4 rating meaning over 62 million people tuned into this game, surpassing the most watched World Series game ever. Also, if you want to know why some of our favorite players say winning the WBC means more than winning the World Series, it's because for many players, it's a dream to represent their country in a competition of this nature. This is why this tournament showcases a form of competitiveness and passion that's rarely ever seen in regular professional baseball. Listen. I'm just going to come out and say it. I think people like KFC Barstool and Frank Fleming are so incredibly incorrect when they bang the whole cancel the WBC because it's stupid drum. I won't even need to show specific instances of their takes here because they're just that easy to find on Twitter. There are so many tweets from them on that. If the WBC was so stupid and meaningless, you would not see MLB stars take time out of their spring training to do it and show as much passion as they do. And unfortunately, People do suffer serious injuries in spring training too. But again, there are more cool players in this thing than just the ones your dad would know. Honestly, I think a rundown of some of the most interesting players in the 2023 WBC that you may have never heard of goes to show what makes this tournament special. If the little blurb about some of those guys from the Czech Republic didn't do it for you. 39-year-old Ray Chang has been playing for China in every WBC since 2009. Shlomo Lipitz is a 44-year-old vice president of programming and music director at City Winery in New York City. He was also a pitcher on Team Israel's roster this year. Didn't get into a game because he was on the reserve pitchers list, but I would have loved to see a mid-70s sidearm fastball from this absolute sex symbol of a man. My boy right there one time. Look at my son. Bless up, Jeez. Yeah. Team Israel also had another pitcher named Jacob Steinmetz, a 19-year-old Arizona Diamondbacks minor leaguer, almost 25 years younger than Shlomo, who is pursuing becoming MLB's first practicing Orthodox Jewish player. Nicaraguan pitcher Duque Habert, who is 21 years old and has only ever pitched in the Nicaraguan Baseball League, came into a game and struck out Juan Soto, Julio Rodriguez, and Rafael Devers. Three MLB All-Stars. He did it without breaking 90 miles an hour once, and he is now signed to the Detroit Tigers organization. Team Netherlands, which is a home for players from the island of Curaçao in the Caribbean, has Vladimir Ballantin, a player Mariners and Reds fans might very briefly remember who went to Japan, hit 60 home runs there in 2013, and shows up to hit bombs in the WBC. Sharon Martis is also on the pitching staff for the Netherlands. He pitched a no-hitter once in the WBC in 2006. Back when he was just 18 years old, he's about to turn 36. He pitched in the first WBC when, by American standards, he could just start to vote and join the army, and today is now old enough to run for president. And those cool connections even extend to MLB players. Among others like them, St. Louis Cardinals players Tommy Edmond and Lars Nootbaar appeared for South Korea and Japan respectively to honor their mothers who are from those countries. 
The most known instance this time around of a player doing just that was likely future Hall of Famer Freddie Freeman suiting up for Canada to honor his late mother for the second straight WBC. Freeman even being in this tournament should remind you guys that Mike Trout, Shohei Otani, Mookie Betts, and Juan Soto, among many other super elite MLB players are here. Miguel Cabrera even did one last tour of duty for Team Venezuela because he's now been in every WBC. You can even find MLB All-Stars on the same teams as some of those interesting guys I ran through quickly before. Jock Peterson started in the 2022 All-Star Game and was teammates on Team Israel with Lippitz and Steinmetz. Xander Bogarts just signed a $280 million contract and was teammates with Ballantine and Martiz for the Netherlands. There is just nothing like this in baseball, maybe even all of sports. The crossover in just caliber of players and origin of players sharing a dugout or playing against one another is amazing. So, now that we understand the diversity of players we're dealing with, how does it all play out in a full game? Well, I went to Phoenix to find out. The first game I attended was Mexico versus Colombia. Pre-tournament betting odds show the immense contrast between these two teams. In fact, Mexico's entire starting lineup played in MLB in 2022, as opposed to only six of the nine Colombians. Also, the potential of a pitching duel between Jose Quintana and Julio Urias was squandered after Quintana suffered a rib injury. So, Nabil Krizmat was given the start for Colombia. Now, I believe Krizmat is one of MLB's more underrated pitchers, but he was going toe-to-toe -to -toe with one of the best pitchers in baseball. Not only did Urias place third in NL Cy Young voting, his 2022 season was one of the best ever by a Mexican-born pitcher. Also, with Mexico being the home team and around 85% of the stadium rooting for them, this felt like a guaranteed win. Speaking of the fans, I expected around 15 to 20,000 people at most. It ended up closer to 30,000, which caused me to miss the first inning because lines were spilling into the streets. Regardless, the atmosphere was incredible. You're not going to find this kind of passion at a regular MLB game. In the first three innings, even with no one scoring, the fans were completely immersed into the game. Then, finally in the fourth inning, Isak Paredes broke the stalemate to take a one-run lead, but this lead didn't last very long. At this point in the game, I decided to wander around the stadium as I'd never been the chase field before. During the top of the fifth, I saw Jorge Alfaro break the Colombian hitless streak with a double, and then Elias Diaz driving him in to tie the game. Then, I distinctly remember going into the bathroom Bathroom and then hearing loud cheers. I figured I missed a go-ahead single, but I missed something much bigger. High, deep, in the corner, a Rosarena, and it's gone! A go-ahead home run by Reynaldo Rodriguez. This is a name you're probably not familiar with. Well, the 36-year-old veteran has never played for an MLB team, and he hasn't been part of an MLB organization since 2016, spending much of his time playing in Mexico, Colombia, and Venezuela. He took part in the 2017 WBC, but he wasn't called upon for this tournament until the week prior to this game. Regardless, Rodriguez wasn't phased by the moment, saying, I was just there searching for my pitches. Where he threw it, that's my zone. It's awesome to see a non-MLB player capitalize on an opportunity of this magnitude. But how about a player who's well known for his clutchness? Randy Rosarena has had quite the share of clutch moments in his career, especially in big games, and this is why the Mexican fans cheered and chanted his name more than any other player. With the game now tied, it was clear that this was a back and forth battle with no clear favorite. So in a situation like this, I think it's best to just sit back and enjoy the show. Watch the bat in the eighth spot. Breaking ball, soft hopper, and it's dropped it short, and Columbia has a run. One, two, got him! Ball game, Columbia does it! 
This was the biggest win in Colombian baseball history. Manager Holbert Cabrera described his unbelievable team as fearless, reaffirming how much this win meant for Colombian baseball. Overall, it was a fantastic effort from both sides, but if Mexico wanted any chance of advancing, they needed to beat their biggest rivals, the United States. When choosing games to attend, Mexico versus USA was at the top of my list from the beginning. The two nations already have a fierce rivalry in soccer, but the added stipulation of this being a must-win game for Mexico massively increased the intensity. <laughs> Also, even in front of a majority pro-Mexican crowd, this wasn't going to be easy for Mexico as the US were considered a top three team in the tournament. How could they not be with guys like Mike Trout, Mookie Betts, Paul Goldschmidt, Nolan Arenado, and Trey Turner all in the same lineup? However, on this day, there was a different player who took over the game, Joey Meneses. Long wait, runner goes, hit deep, left field. The last year of Joey Meneses' life has been quite eventful, to say the least. Before the 2022 season, 29-year-old Meneses signed a minor league deal with the Nationals, preparing for his 10th minor league season. Well, following the trade of Juan Soto and Josh Bell, the now 30-year-old Meneses was called up to make his big league debut, even hitting a home run for his first major league hit. This was just one of the many memorable moments from his 2022 stint, a stint that earned him a spot on the Mexican WBC roster. Not too long after this home run, the US got a run back courtesy of a Tim Anderson single, but Mexico was able to capitalize off some defensive miscues in the third, courtesy of an Isak Paredes infield single. Of course, Randy Arozarena had the join in on the action, so in the fourth, he hit an RBI double. It was a great start for Mexico, but the US could just as easily score four runs of their own. However, Team Mexico wasn't done. out to the ninth, Goldschmidt. Thomas says, that's mine, that's number 10, he's caught, and Mexico has taken down USA. This was one of the best sporting events I've ever attended. The only game I can reasonably compare this to was game two of the 2022 NLCS. Everything was incredible, from the high stakes, to the upset victory, to the lively atmosphere, and even the random moment when everyone in the stadium decided to hold up their phones with their flash on. It was an unforgettable experience, but I'd venture to say this wasn't even the best game attended by a member of this channel. All right, so that brings me to the game I attended in Miami for the WBC recently. Puerto Rico versus Venezuela. Even just walking in, our friend giraffe neck Mark captured how electric the fans were entering the stadium. I'd have been able to see it myself if traffic wasn't backed up for an hour trying to get to the place. Electric is the best word I can use to describe the experience. There was this rush of excitement just hearing the crowd when me and my friends were outside the stadium. So first getting inside, oh boy was that an adrenaline starter. Listen, Jose Altuve worked a walk during a six run game in the third inning and there were still deafening cheers. Please enjoy the sights and sounds of a WBC game in Miami with my perspective captured for you.
still going back. Reaches out and makes a catch. And he'll sprint back into the infield to celebrate with his teammates. I said I was chasing that high from USDR for about six years earlier in the vid. I got it. This was better. Everything was better. The talent in this WBC, the stories, and especially the vibes. Even after the elephant in the room. I'm overjoyed to get to be a part of the experience and feel honored to be advocating for the event here. One final message for you. The tournament isn't over yet. At the time of this video going up, there will be three games left, the semifinals and the finals. Go watch them. Go see who wins and takes the glory home. We promise you, from experience, the WBC is awesome, and I already cannot wait for the next one in 2026.